This is lecture 27 on the unintended consequences of environmental regulation. I'm going to give this at UCLA tomorrow. I wanted a dress rehearsal. Many empirical economists uh, write papers that are always well received documenting the unintended consequences of regulation. To be more uh, useful, uh, if economists can anticipate unintended consequences, then we can design better regulation, and it's more likely the case that the benefits of regulation will exceed the costs. I'm going to walk pretty quickly through uh, seven examples of unintended consequences of regulation. Example number one, mandatory seat belts, and the same thing has occurred with mandatory airbags. The goal of this safety regulation was to protect drivers, but the regulators ignored that when you change the rules of the game, drivers will change their behavior. In particular, when drivers feel safer behind the wheel, they'll drive faster because time is money. And unfortunately, more pedestrians have been killed as a direct consequence of drivers feeling safety. So it's not obvious that mandatory seat belts and mandatory airbags are good public policy unless you bundle them with uh, rules where there's more cops on the road enforcing speeding tickets. Example number two comes back to Merrill Streep and apples. Uh, chemicals in food concern us, but uh, an unintended consequence of banning chemicals that kill bugs is in basic from basic supply and demand in the apple market. If you ban using this chemical, then the bugs eat more of the fruit. This in shifts in the supply curve, raising the price of apples. And poor parents now facing a choice between more expensive apples as apples become relatively more expensive, the law of demand tells us there's going to be substitution, and nutrition experts have found evidence of uh, households substituting to junk food. And so in this case, an unintended consequence of well-meaning food safety regulation could be that children's diet gets worse uh, because of the substitution effects. Now, how big a deal this is, is an empirical question that merits more research. Tighter vehicle emission standards. So this is the, the famous Gruen spec paper. It's often the case that uh, manufacturers find new regulations costly. They raise the sticker price of their, and when, so when they face new environmental protection agency regulation, say uh, t required ca stronger catalytic converters, this raises the sticker price to consumers of new cars. Consumers turn around and keep their old cars longer, but these old cars are dirty. And an unintended consequence of keeping the existing old fleet longer, which was caused by the regulation, is to actually raise urban air pollution in the short run. The same thing has been found in the case of power plants. You regulate new power plants, and owners of existing power plants uh, want to be grandfathered, and they keep their old dirty power plants, which are less regulated, longer than they would have, in the absence of the regulation. So you end up with an older capital stock, and since old capital is dirtier than new capital, you actually end up degrading air quality in a counterfactual sense relative to what it would have been uh, if there had just been the normal replacement cycle for cars and power plants. The Endangered Species Act. So the Endangered Species Act has an implicit takings clause. So if you're a private property landowner in the United States, and if you recognize that there are rare creatures like bald eagles or some sort of salamander on your property, you know that under the Endangered Species Act, if it becomes common knowledge that these creatures are on your property, you lose the option to develop your property, perhaps building a swimming pool or extending your house. And this creates an unintended consequence that homeowners have an incentive to kill these endangered species before they're discovered on their property. And so that is nasty as an unintended consequence to actually accelerate the destruction of natural capital. And this is a byproduct of how this regulation has been created, that rather than compensating the landowners, and that would be costly, this implicit takings clause creates an incentive to sort of hide and destroy if, you, if a private property owner recognizes that these creatures are located there. The Clean Air Act. I've done work on this. The Clean Air Act is not uniformly 
regulated across the United States. Counties that are more populated and polluted are more likely to be assigned to non-attainment status, high regulation, relative to more rural, pristine counties, which are more likely to be assigned to attainment status, low regulation. Many empirical economists have documented that a consequence of this is that footloose, dirty manufacturing, so industries that produce a lot of pollution per unit per dollar of output and that are relatively mobile, are moving, have an incentive to move from high regulation areas to less regulated areas. And this is a, a deflection effect. You could argue that this deflection effect is good in the sense that it improves public health if a dirty manufacturing plant leaves highly populated Los Angeles and moves to a more rural location. But this, the Clean Air Act did not mean to clean up the air in this way. It did not mean to change the spatial distribution of economic activity. It meant to reduce pollution at existing plants. So again, the Clean Air Act has again introduced an unintended consequence in its attempt to clean air in polluted places like Los Angeles. Carbon leakage. Well, I'm going to skip this one in the name of time, uh, but there's a number of studies discussing this recently as another unintended consequence. If a single market, such as a California, regulates uh, while the rest of the nation does not introduce such policies. The rebound effect. So, the rebound effect focuses on if there is a mandated improvement uh, in, in fuel economy, say, like the, the corporate average fuel economy standards, what that does is it lowers the price per mile of driving because each mile requires less gasoline. And that's what I'm walking through in this algebra here. An unintended consequence of mandating that you face a lower price per mile of driving is the law of demand. People are going to drive more. And so it can be the case under extremely elastic demand, and I don't know if that empirically is true, but under extremely elastic demand, mandating that everyone drive a Prius could actually exacerbate climate change if when people drive such a vehicle, they sharply increase their miles driving to the point that they increase their gasoline consumption. But again, that's an empirical question of how large is that induced demand effect. More algebra. More algebra again. The UCLA students will see this tomorrow. Cash for coolers is my final example from Mexico. Another rebound effect that is uh, in Mexico as households had access to more energy efficient air conditioners, they actually use them more in the summer months, cooling themselves. Households have a demand to be cool during the summer months. If you have very energy efficient, mandated by government appliance, you might use it even more so that efficiency causes you to use more electricity and thus more pollution from the greenhouse gases and local pollutants created by power generation. Conclusion. Government often assumes that its actions will not induce a behavioral change. This assumption is false and economists need to continue to work on this. To see. So this doesn't mean that the government action is bad. It just means we need a wise government factors in the behavioral response its regulations will induce.